Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're here for the first time. First of all, let me thank all of you again who voted in the poll that I put up two weeks ago, I think it was now. An overwhelming number of you wanted to see my thoughts on both Barbie and Oppenheimer and since Barbie's already out, you can check it out up here. Today we're talking about Oppenheimer as well, so strap in. Also, this video is going to be spoilers heavy, so you've been warned. And of course, feel free to drop your thoughts on the movie in the comments below at any time. So I went to see Oppenheimer a few weeks ago. Barbie I didn't see in theaters, I saw it uh, the Jack Sparrow way, if you know what I mean. But Oppenheimer, we went to the movies properly to see it, and it really was an awesome cinematic experience. I love history, so I was really interested in this topic specifically because it is a time of history an era that I don't know that much about. I'm more interested in the stuff that happened before the first and second world war, so before the 21st century. But yeah, it was really nice to learn a bit more about this time in history. First of all, I might be biased because I do have a soft spot for Killian Murphy because he's my birthday twin, but also I genuinely think he's a great actor. And I love seeing good actors in roles that allow them to showcase their talent and their skill and their hard work. I think all of the cast did a great job. Um, let me know which performance you enjoyed the most, if anyone surprised you in a positive or negative way. There are many things that I loved in the movie and some things that I didn't like quite as much, but let's just do a quick recap first. Oppenheimer tells a story about the physicist Oppenheimer, nicknamed the father of the atomic bomb. The movie tells a story about his life and how he and a team of scientists work secretly on creating the atomic bomb. After Germany's surrender, some of the scientists working on the project wonder if they should continue with the development, but Oppenheimer still believes that the bomb could end the war for good, since there is still war raging with Japan in the Pacific. And since the test is a success, President Truman orders the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oppenheimer is haunted by the destruction that he knows they unleashed, and he wants to limit further nuclear weapon development, but many others do not. This also causes issues for him in the future. The movie also parallelly focuses on Oppenheimer's hearing, and in that hearing he's basically accused of being a communist sympathizer. That partly has to do with Oppenheimer's reservations in regards to continuing with the development of nuclear weapons, and partly also due to more personal feud with the US Atomic Energy Commission chairman, Louis Strauss, who feels like his reputation was tarnished by Oppenheimer and also that Oppenheimer turned Einstein against him. Now during that hearing, during that trial, Oppenheimer is basically betrayed by a few colleagues and his public image as well as his political influence are damaged. Ultimately, years later, this is somewhat amended, more importantly, or rather relevant for the ending of the movie, it is also revealed that Oppenheimer and Einstein's conversation had nothing to do with Strauss, as he thought, it was about nuclear weapons and the threat that was unleashed with the creation of the bomb. Now, I think we could maybe start with the negatives. One of the things that bothered me a little at times was pacing. Now, the movie is three hours long and it didn't feel like it dragged on, not in that sense, but it's just that at some points the pacing was a bit slower and you kind of start losing interest, but then pulls you back in, which to be fair, that's normal, right? No movie, especially no three hour movie, can have every single scene be super interesting. I've heard some people in their reviews suggesting that maybe the movie could be made into a mini-series instead of a three-hour movie. Um, but I don't know if that would really work that well or necessarily better. I feel like there would be a higher chance uh, for them to feel like they need to include some unnecessary fluff. But yeah, do let me know if you think the movie would be better as a mini-series. I still think it works great as a film, despite not being this action-packed adventure with every single scene being super interesting. And I think this is something that we should learn, or relearn, to enjoy. A slower-paced movie that doesn't just jump from scene to scene to scene. As always, some people will not be that interested in the film because of the theme, but also because they maybe will find it boring. Which is no surprise, because nowadays we're used to shorter and shorter video formats, that are decreasing our time span. But yeah, as I said, it almost feels like a lost skill to not lose focus just because the movie doesn't have a jump cut every three seconds. Another thing is, that's not necessarily negative, but it's more of a suggestion if you haven't seen the movie yet. The movie has a lot of characters 
and I would highly recommend you to at least have the basics covered before you go and watch this film. You know, just like the general backstory, who the main people involved in Oppen Oppenheimer's life were. I think absolutely even without the backstory, you can still follow the movie well. You know, it doesn't necessarily make you completely lost or anything, but it will definitely enrich your experience if you have some more knowledge about the main players um, and about the political situation at the time. There were many scenes that I loved and many things that I loved in general about the movie. Um, one of my favorite scenes was probably when his wife is getting questioned, how we're almost made to believe for a second, you know, oh, how is she going to handle this? And then she actually ends up nailing it. Even though I think, you know, from her perspective, the reason why she felt like maybe she could just go off is because they knew at that point that it was that their case was pretty much lost, that they were gonna lose. Even though Kitty, his Oppenheimer's wife, is not a very active character in the sense that she, she's not really moving any big chess pieces on the board, but she still has a, an interesting role and moments where she shines. Another great scene that probably won't surprise anyone is right after the, they've dropped the bomb, um, when Oppenheimer is giving his little speech I thought that was really well executed, you know, such strong imagery of him saying one thing and clearly feeling like they have achieved a huge success as physicists, as scientists. And yeah, in a way that was a major achievement, but at the same time he's of course also slowly realizing what kind of hell they've unleashed with the creation of such a weapon. And that internal conflict and the gradual realization, I thought that was really well performed and also translated into the visuals. I pretty much loved everything from, you know, the actual testing of the bomb to the eventual untangling of, you know, the, the whole development of the trial and how things come to light. I also really enjoyed moments from Oppenheimer's hearing, for example, that representation of feeling completely bare, a moment of total vulnerability for him, you know what moment I'm talking about. It was really cool how they decided to depict that visually, but also we don't just see that from Oppenheimer's perspective, we also get to see it from Kitty's perspective. It's not just problematic for his professional life, but it was also a huge deal in regards to his personal life. Needless to say, the scene when they tested the bomb was pretty fantastic how they, you know, everything with the gradual building of, you know, with the anticipation, with the nervousness, with the, how, how they show different characters, how they reacted to it, to the delayed sound, right? Which sort of harmonizes with the delayed realization of the horrors that this kind of weapon can bring. And for the ending, I think they really nailed that. Again, it's the cyclical nature of it, right? It comes back to the conversation between Oppenheimer and Einstein, and we see it from Strauss's perspective in the beginning and then we're kept in the dark through the whole duration of the movie in regards to what they discussed. And yeah, of course, it turns out it had nothing to do with Strauss. It was about something greater. Endings can be really tricky, especially in a movie like that that doesn't actually have an ending. Many more doors are open than there are closed. Many more questions are presented than answers given. And this sort of an ending where you as a viewer are faced with a very relevant topic still today I think that was executed really, really well. It leaves you with this feeling of anxiety, which, I mean, that's kind of the point of the movie. It's, it's a realistic movie. It doesn't seek to embellish something. You're not supposed to leave the theater and be all giddy and giggly and, oh, this was so fun, yay. No, <laughs> that's not what it's supposed to be. So I think it, you know, it achieves what it's aiming to achieve. For me, the film reminded me a little bit of the imitation game. Of course, there are a lot of differences between creating a nuclear weapon of mass destruction versus discovering how to decode an, a German encryption machine, but obviously there are some similarities. Taking place during World War II, people working on a secret project with the objective of both being to end the war, just in very different ways with very different methods, but also the aftermath of, of what happens to the main players in both stories. While Britain's version of thanking Alan Turing for everything he did for the country was essentially forcibly castrating him and, you know, for being gay, 
ruining his life completely. We also see that Oppenheimer's country and several colleagues turned his back on him and not completely destroyed his career, but very much paralyzed it. Overall, I just thought it was very refreshing to see a movie that makes you think and analyze and empathize rather than just dragging you into another action set of a beloved IP brought back to life like a zombie who no one asked for or sucking you into an empty, soulless shell of yet another live-action remake. I really enjoyed Oppenheimer and I'm curious to know how you guys felt about it, what you liked, what you disliked. So, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you soon in another video.